babies are sleeping so really cute afternoon nap time boys will be home soon in about probably 20 30 minutes or so it's a, a really really cold day i stopped the ac a few times but um covered in blank um i just listened to um this i i will continue to listen but i stopped it because i paused because it made me think um it, it's a lesson the sunday school lesson that we um have every other sunday now in church but because one sunday is a relief society and for the for the sisters and priesthood meetings for the for the guys it's the same lesson but it just i don't know um we get together sisters and, and brothers but then the other sunday the, the following sundays um sunday school so that's what i really like and look forward to because i learn i want to learn and i have the desire to learn from the scriptures um more about um what what this life is all about and how we can over overtake the challenges and um pretty much live your life as close as you can to the lord because um whether people believe it or not he is there and he um knows us more better than we do ourselves and we, we we there's a lot we don't understand here on earth and there comes the the doubt the um, um yeah but first of all and to begin with and the most important is this life is given to us as um is a test um, to live by faith because if we live by knowledge then we don't make any mistakes and we don't break our covenants and we don't learn anything that's why in the scriptures I love it, love it, love it when it says there is opposition in all things there must be opposition in all things in here because if there is no there is no good or evil you learn, you don't learn anything if there is no sunny days and only rainy it doesn't work that this plot isn't going to exist so you know what i mean like there is always opposition that's how this life is designed and this whole plan of about it before it was even designed designed and made this world and so um the sunday school lesson that i had i, I we used to attend on uh, um, zoom in the past few weeks actually in person in church with masks um an open window has been has been great it, it, it's been great because you know i like to sit there and just ponder and think whenever it's possible because those two little people are always around so they just too cute and i get distracted but um there is also online um sunday school it's um it's called come follow me i think it's an app too um haven't checked out i have to probably do it but uh come follow me if you type on youtube i highly recommend it it's this year we're studying the, um, the doctrine and covenants which originally is on his book of commandments which was written in those years between um the restoration of the church of the lord on earth again and the second prophet after joseph smith's martyrdom uh brigham young becomes the second prophet and i think there are 130 i want to say seven sections i'm not i'm not sure kind of like chapters and um oh boy i have learned a lot from church history and what the pioneers um had to go through what persecutions they had to go through um as they were slowly moving toward the west and finally ending up in the salt lake valley it's part of the american history brigham young was the governor of the, the territory of utah 
before it was a, a state and um, lots of people came to join some left towards California for the gold mines um, lots of people died on the way they didn't make it um, but always the goal was to build the new Jerusalem to build Zion um, as as it, it's known in in the Old Testament I think Zion is um, just the term now it used to be a city when the city of Enoch which was taken away but that concept of righteousness was to be established again on the earth with the restoration and a lot of a lot was restored with that especially the priesthood power was given back to righteous men um and then we do have a prophet with, with his councils and 12 apostles and they travel around the world all the time and temples of the lord had had been built pretty much everywhere i had to go to the one in germany when i was younger but then i um i had the chance to go to a few of them around the world um the house of the lord the temples they're just out of this world they're just beautiful in design and structure and perfection inside and the best materials the best even the contractors um that sign a contract with the the those the construction companies they have to have their workers uh, keep special sp rules they they cannot smoke around the area or use filthy language or any of that um uh, but um my point was so i was listening to the this week or the following i think they're a little bit ahead but it's okay um they're they're talking about section 133 and 134 of doctrine and covenants which is part of our scriptures and we read the it's this big <laughs> read the old testament the new testament which is the bible and then we read the book of mormon which is the the records of the people who lived in the Americas. Um, some of them left Jerusalem during King Zedekiah in the Old Testament. Some of them left right after the Babylonian Tower was um, destroyed. So it's like history of two, one very ancient nation. They didn't end up well. They just so the second one after that when they came they found civilization that was to be there was there before but they didn't find any records of any of that they just saw lots of buildings that were there before and probably lots of skeletons and tombs and whatnot but um but then they they write about it and then we have it we have that record because both nations got um wiped out from the, from the face of the earth it, which is really ironic because they were taken from babylon babylon is like what is it and then the other one from jerusalem from um, israel from yeah from the the holy land and both nations were taken away in different times um with barges or with the ship but built by design of the lord not man-made because People in Jerusalem didn't know how to build ships. Maybe boats, yes, but ships? I don't think so. They don't really have, like, seas and oceans. They do have seas. The Galilee Sea. And, but they don't really... Do they? I don't know. But the, the, ships, the ship was designed by the Lord. Anyways, um, the blueprints. So, my point is... That's a book of Mormon. The, the, and then we read about Doctrine and Covenants, which was the revelation, like I told you before, from the re, from the beginning of the restoration of the church to up to after the um, Prophet Joseph Smith was murdered. And um, I think it was the second prophet, the third prophet. I don't, I don't remember towards the end. We'll, we'll, we'll see. The, the Sunday school teachers are really good. They're scholars and... Um, that those videos are authorized by the church i think and it's um also an app but come follow me is the name and um 
one of them uh, follow their two instructors Tyler and Taylor um, one of them um, covers the history behind and the um, spiritual effects and print the principles the, the doctrine it's really amazing it's mind-blowing I listened to those videos and I just feel like spiritually fed well that day um, um, the other um, the other um, Taylor, Tyler, Taylor, Taylor, he explains the the words, the meaning of the words sometimes, and um, it's very interesting because uh, he knows the linguistics uh, and, and he knows the, from uh, what language ancient language comes from. Um, he talked today about Babylon, um, Babylon, um. In Bulgarian, say Babylon, Vavilon, with V sound. I don't know. It's very interesting. Every time something is with V in Bulgarian, it's B in English. So interesting. We say Vavilon, but and they say, you know, in English is Babylon. And Babylon, um, when you break it, Bab, it means gate, a gate. Um, and then he broke the rest of the word into L. E L I L L O him, which <clears throat> is God, God's gods, you know, plural. So Babylon means literally the gates of the gods. And so he said, brothers and sisters, those were um, the Babylonians had many different temples dedicated to their different idols um, or gods that they were worshiping. There were multiple. And I don't know how many were they, but there were many. And then they had great, great buildings built for them. And um, he said, brothers and sisters, it, it's good. It's a good reminder to think about because he was, he was, they were just reading a scripture from the Doctrine and Covenants. And it was the words of the Lord talking to the people back in 1943, 42, 1842, sorry. Um. 100 years later, World War. Wow, it's just amazing. Um, it just got into me. Uh, but um, um, it, it, I just stopped it there because he said, how many of those gates of the gods we have in our lives? In a way, like he was pretty much saying, how many distractions or things that we sent our minds on are in our lives that um, prevent us from being able to stay in tune with the Lord. Um, they're both so cute. They're snoring. Cute. Cute. Um, and, um, and I stopped it. I stopped it. I just, I just felt like I, I wanted to think through it and just talk it out. Um, and, for, for everybody is different definitely for everybody is different everybody has their own um addictions or worshiping um things things not a living god but things man-made um creation creations like um it could be a career it could be um Lots of men get addicted to cars. Uh, it could be money and um, what do you call it? Money and power and status. Um, it could be your. For me, sometimes I I like hot chocolate, so I, that's my addiction. I I, in the winter months, if not every day, at least every other day, I just love to just warm up um, a mug of water and just pour my hot chocolate inside and just feel like it's my melting time when it's um you know comfort food not not just food you need it but it's a comfort food especially if you have like a biscuit to dip in it like or your cookie or um, they have in japan like different kinds of sweets um but so that's one of mine i know for sure there are others you know like there are things uh for example i like things to be like very simple Ex example is like I don't know why but like because I've been doing the laundry for so many years um, 
outside hanging things. I have my own way of hanging things. And the reason I do it that way is because it's more efficient for me. What I think is efficient for to, to the clothes to be aired up and uh, dried easily. And so I just insist to be that way. And if um, somebody else would hang out the laundry that day, I would go out later and I'll, I'll fix it the way I, I like it. I'm sorry that that's how I am. That That's me. Go figure. Um, you know, because I'll be just really bothered by the fact that the, the, the long pants, especially in the winter, they will never dry up completely the way he hangs them. And I do it in the way that it will get aired from every angle so it can be dry at the end of the day and don't have to hang it around the rooms and just create more clutter you know that's my point i don't want clutter i, I want simple and clean not like pile 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 up stuff which the boys like to do in their room oh my gosh oh excuse me oh uh, but uh every everybody all of us have this um um those no i would i wouldn't say one and there are more than one um things to work on or things that we know are stopping us from being more open for the 